And folks, let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. You can check out Teddy's Tiger Forex report right on the front page of TFNN, folks. He publishes a report weekly, every Monday. You can sign up for that, and we got a treat, because a week from today, folks, he'll be hosting a webinar at 4 p.m. Eastern time for subscribers. You can sign up for the Tiger Forex report. You gain access to the newsletter, which is an outstanding letter in itself. It's $97 for a month, folks. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee no matter what. You'll gain access to the webinar coming up a week from today at 4 p.m. That will be archived if you can't attend live. You get the newsletter for a month. If it's just not up your alley, you don't trade for whatever reason, you're not into it. Uh, and, folks, there is so much great information. You're seeing what happens in currencies right now, man. The market is kind of uh, promoting this thing itself with the impact the dollar's having on the markets across the board. But check it out, folks, front page of TFNN, and we're going to talk to Teddy right now, find out about that webinar. Teddy Kegstack, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. How about that U.S. dollar yen trade? I said, you know, what? It's, it seems like it's always a great day to have you on, Teddy, man, but we know, you know, you've given us an education. Uh, these currencies, they are driving so much of what's going on in this market. And before we jump into the dollar, Teddy, because I want to talk to you about it all, man, how about the yen pushing 150? We got a lot of gold traders out there, gold negative today. But if you could mm -hmm. real quick, talk us through what you're going to be going through and what you've put together for the subscribers of the Tiger Forex Report next Wednesday. Uh, sure. So next Wednesday, we're going to have a one hour webinar and we're basically going to go over like how I do the uh, put the Tiger Forex report together. We're going to look at the markets that influence the U.S. dollar and other currency pairs. And then we'll break down where they're at, where those trends are and what kind of influence they should have on the different currency pairs that we're going to talk about, which will be all your major ones like the pound, the euro, the yen and the Aussie, the New Zealand and the Canada. It's awesome, man. I can't wait. Um, subscribers, I'm sure it'll be some definite value to say the least and let's jump into it man last night how mm -hmm. about that dollar index right you go to sleep at 112 and you wake up at 113 and the market obviously reacts what's your take on on the dollar as we kick things off well very strong it's not hard to believe it because i mean look at the the bond the 30-year bonds and the 10-year notes you know i mean if you look on a weekly chart of both of them they've been in the red for you know this is going on you know since this beginning of the summertime there is no wild up, yeah. up week whatsoever you know and even on the daily basis we've made new lows again so i think that is definitely driving the surge it's definitely helping to help lift the U.S. dollar yen um, to or towards 150. Now we've had a 150 price target since the beginning of the summer, and I, I was looking for it to be the end of October, beginning of November. So now we're we're butting up against that right now. I would use caution <clears throat> if you're already long, keep your stops tight and look for a correction, a pullback. I would look at, to be a buy dip kind of scenario for if you're not in the trade i would wait to buy it lower i wouldn't try and jump in right now i'm not afraid of buying new highs or selling new lows but in this situation i would use caution as we hit the 150 level because i mean we could easily see i mean we had just a month and a half ago you know a seven handle range that happened in the course of just over an hour in the u.s dollar yen so if the algos kick and the stops start to really get run you know if the dollar has any type of reversal day you might see a three four handle pullback in the U.S. dollar yen, so you got to be prepared for that. It's a great point. I mean, the moves are just so large right now. Even when I pulled up the S&P, I had said to our man Kevin Hinks, Teddy, I talked to him Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and from the time I talked to him Thursday to this Tuesday, the S&P was up almost 8%, man, 8% mm -hmm. from Thursday to Tuesday. So uh, point being, right, you get some pullbacks, and man, the market is just moving everywhere. Uh, what about crude, Teddy, as we pull back to about 82 bucks? We've seen quite a little pullback in the last, uh, what, five, eight days in crude as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice. You know, this crude has definitely stabilized over the past couple of months. But I don't see it as being a bear. I see this as just being an you know, extended little range trade that's going on for the oil market. I can't see how we would trend lower into the holidays and the new year. Like I don't see us going from where we're at going down to say like seventy, sixty-five dollars, something like that over the next few months. I see us going back up above a hundred actually by Christmas time or New Year's. And how, for the listeners that haven't heard you talk about it, and maybe this is something that you could even talk about, and maybe you plan on it when you talk about the mm -hmm. webinar, but you've given such a great education in crude, and especially how that relates to um, producing countries like mm -hmm. the U.S., and then how that ties to a country like Japan. Um, could you just talk about that a little bit and how that's shaping kind of what's going on in this market right now, or if that's one of the impacts you're talking about? Where is that in the, in the conversation that you look as you look at the dollar, especially with the yen? Well, you know what? Yeah, that's actually a really good question, uh, especially because now we have this 
talk coming out of Washington that our president wants to put a ban on exporting oil. You know, so if they do that, that means that that's really going to impact the price of oil globally. And I think that would also lift the U.S. dollar yen even much higher than it is because we su we supply oil around the world. Japan's one of our allies and we do send oil that way. You know, so if we now start saying we're no longer going to export, you know, that means that global supply is going to there's going to be a supply chain issue with that you know i mean okay. we are we're already not the net exporter like we were you know but we definitely still are exporting oil if yeah. we shut off those those lines of you know energy i think that the us dollar yen could see probably an extra 10 dollar rally i mean we could there's there's no intervention coming from the japanese i'm stunned i mean i said this already you know 6 months ago when they had the first you know speak about saying how they were going to defend their currency when it was trading in the 120s you know and they said 130 was the line in the sand and then they had a couple of weeks back where we had that big day with the you know where they said oh we're going to finally do something but they didn't you know so the reality is they're letting their currency crash and every time they speak, they get a little correction, but it doesn't hold because there's no reality. They're buying their bond market, so you can't buy the bond market and support your currency at the same time. Yeah, and yeah, it's pretty wild. Um, and yeah, that was I think it was September 22nd, pulling the chart almost a month ago. It's crazy how time mm -hmm. flies. And since then, uh, one day of red, three more days of red, everything else green since then. September 22nd on a daily basis on the mm -hmm. dollar yen. Uh, we got a question, Teddy. We got a caller. Sure. All right, let's jump Great. to our caller. We got a caller, Jeff from Philly. Jeff, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Doing well, man. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well. I'll try not to take too much time. A uh, quick question for uh, Teddy, please. Uh, what Go I want to ask Thanks. is, uh, suppose that you've been trading FX using futures uh, for a few years, but you're going to be, uh, but let's say that you switch or you need to switch to um, trading FX in the cash market as opposed to the futures. Would you, I noticed that the cash market seems to be a lot more spiky than the futures market. And my question is, would you trade, uh, I'm a pattern trader, would you trade any differently the cash market than the futures market, as, you know, as far as the price action. Like, in other words, maybe keep uh, wider stops, or you know, would, uh -huh. would you trade it any differently? That's a fantastic question. Um, there's a big difference between trading the cash market and the futures market. Um, first of all, is your liquidity issues. Uh, in the cash, you definitely have much more liquidity than you do in the futures. Um, there's also you have rollovers that you have to deal with when you're trading that, you know, because there's always the front month. So, you know, you have March, September, December and uh, in June, you know, so those time periods around rollover, you have to be very cautious about your position and whether and how you roll that position because of the spreads. Um, I'll tell you so what, Teddy, can you hang on yeah. one second? All right, sure. hang with us, Jeff, hang with us, all right? Because that's sure, a great we'll question. Answer Jeff's question then. We'll come right back and we'll jump right back into it. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now, negative by 21 points. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. And don't forget, folks, check out on the front page of TFNN, the Tiger Forex Report. You get the newsletter for a month. You get a webinar coming up a week from today. It should be an outstanding education. Check it out. Please sign up. And we'll jump back into it. We're talking to our man, Jeff, from Philly. And go for it, Teddy. You were just talking about some of the differences between futures uh, sure. and the cash. Okay, great question from Jeff. Uh, so to get back to his point, especially says uh, he says he trades patterns. Um, the difference between futures and forex can be a great, sign greatly significant when it comes to your type of trading. Um, I mentioned the rollovers and expirations. If you're in around the expiration months, like basically like for June expiration, if you were between May, middle of May and middle of June, you probably, if you had a pattern that was a buy or sell signal that's going to last for a week or two, you would rather be in the cash markets, okay? In the futures markets, if it's not during the rolls, and the reason I say that is because you'd have to flip your contract. So let's say you're long, okay, in a position and you're going into rollover. Depending on if the spread widens out or in, you may, when you flip explain you have to get get out of one contract and get you know basically sell out of your one long and then buy into net the future the next front month that spread could cost you money on your trade so you may be right on the long position but because you have to roll the contract in the middle of that position you may not see as much of a profit as you would you may see more it depends on how the spreads moving um, now the other thing is like for the FX markets like for instance me I've been long the US dollar yen for over 14 15 months great to be long and to have that trade on the only thing is i've been paying interest for 14 15 months so especially during sideways periods that 
definitely, even if I'm not losing money technically on the price, I am losing money on the on the account balance because of the interest payment, okay? So those are factors you wanna take in. If you're doing a really long-term position, FX is pro the FX cash is probably the way to go, but you have to be mindful of your interest payments. Um, and the futures, except for during rollovers, that can be actually a, a much more um, lucrative way to trade the, those moves. So absolutely great question. Well, Jeff, helps, yeah. thank you so much for the call and calling in, man. We appreciate it. Teddy, yeah. thank you so much, Join man. Join our we'll webinar talk, on Wednesday, Jeff. We'll <laughs> talk to you Wednesday, and I look forward to the webinar next week, Teddy, man. Thanks so much. Thanks, Tom. Folks, See you next week. check out Teddy's webinar on the front page of TFN. And our man Basil Chapman's up next. Have a great Wednesday, everybody.